Okay, this meeting is being recorded, so you're going to have to hit continue. Everybody that's here. So good evening, everyone. And before we begin, um, I want to acknowledge these unprecedented trying times that we're all going through and send my sincere wishes to everyone that in hope that you're staying healthy and safe through this pandemic. I know these are very difficult times for our students, their families, the teachers, the staff, the administrators, as well as the members of the Board of Education. And I wanna thank everyone for their patience and kindness over the last two months. We've been extremely cognizant of how sensitive this budget is during a fiscal and health crisis. And we're doing all that we can to preserve programs for children, trying to avoid layoffs for teachers and staff while remaining fiscally responsible to our taxpayers in the city. We've held off presenting a proposed budget as long as we could in hopes of receiving final state aid numbers from the Department of Budget. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened as we're 70% dependent on state aid. In this new norm of virtual meetings, we wanna ensure that the public has the opportunity to ask questions and participate. However, it has to be done in somewhat controlled manner. So thank you for your patience in the waiting room. And as we proceed with the workshop, we ask that in order for you to ask a question or make a comment, type it in the comment box, please. We'll address questions, comments after the presentation. And then at the very end, any board member that would like to speak after all the questions and the comments have been addressed, please let me know, either raise your hand, give me a signal, um, and we will you know, allow you to whatever questions, comments that you have. But, Anything that you have while we're presenting, you know, if you want to hold it to the end, it doesn't matter. You can put them in the chat box. We have somebody writing the questions down and we all make sure that they get addressed. So again, um, you know, these are, have been really difficult times and this budget is no different, but we did our very best to preserve programs for our children and um, avoid layoffs to the best of our ability. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our business manager, Mr. Keith Hyde. Um, let me just begin by saying that this is by no means a completed budget. This is a living, breathing document. Uh, as Dr. Kaplan stated, we were hoping to get more clarification on our final state aid number after the governor completed his first of three lookbacks at which he was supposed to tell us what our cut would be um, earlier this afternoon, but of course that didn't happen. Uh, so with that, um, again, keep in mind that this is uh, our first run at our reductions, and uh, we still have some work to do, but this is a good starting point. Put the presentation up. I don't see it. There you go. Can everybody see that now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go to slide two. All right, so a couple of things that uh, I wanted to just touch upon before we get into the numbers themselves is that every year we seem to have the same problem. It's not a problem with our expenditures or being irresponsible. It's every year we're content, we're waiting on what our final revenue numbers are going to be. Uh, we rely on state aid in our school taxes for 95% of our total revenues. Um, we are now limited in the amount of taxes that we can raise by the statutory tax cap, which has been in, its, which has been in effect since 2011 and 12. And I would point out that we have been under the cap every year since then, and this year will be no different. Our current uh, tax levy will be going out at $7,239,000, which in a slide or two you will see is under our maximum statutory cap. All right, so the problem that we have with actually coming out with a budget is everything has been, the timeline has been completely condensed and we still have so many questions that we haven't gotten any guidance on, uh, whether it be from uh, state ed or from the governor. And so we're trying to uh, hit a moving target here. So for example, um, we cannot create a budget without knowing how much we have to spend. 
again, I reiterate, 70% of our budget is dependent upon state aid. If we don't have that final number, then there's no way I can tell uh, the board or Dr. Kaplan or the public how much uh, we need to cut. Uh, so we're trying to pinpoint that number down. Um, as the days get less and less, we're just going to have to uh, make our best effort and do our best guess and, and go from there. Um, our current fiscal year, before our pandemic hit, uh, we were in really good shape again. Uh, we were projecting an increase in our fund balance and everything was, was going along pretty well. And then as of uh, March 16th, uh, the wheels fell off. So going forward, we have transportation contracts. We've had mixed um, guidance as to whether those still have to be paid, even though the, the contractors aren't providing transportation to our students. Uh, if we do have to pay, will we be aided on, the, on those expenses? Um, if we're not, we can use those savings and roll it forward into next year's budget. If we do and we're not getting aid on that, uh, that completely changes the picture. Um, our current year state aid payments. So far to date, uh, we have only heard that this current uh, crisis will not impact our current state aid payments. So the end of the year um, should flow smoothly. Our 2020-21 state aid. Again, the executive keeps floating out this potential of a 20% cut to school aid. Um, as I said, the district is 70 is 70% uh, reliant on state aid. We get over $13 million in foundation aid. And if we were to be subject to a 20% cut of that foundation aid, uh, we would have a 2.6 million hole that we would have to fill. And what's different about uh, this current crisis as opposed to other years is that um, we have one crack at having the public adopt our budget and vote for it. And if not, we go straight to what's called the contingency budget. So the first thing we had to look at is what's called a rollover budget. And what that means is that if everything stayed the same, if, if state aid stayed the exact same that we're getting this year, um, how would our expenditures look or what would our budget gap look like? You can see throughout the course of the year, um, we've had uh, 13 students that now require uh, special education services, either at uh, the Capital Region BOCES or through one of our private schools that has a price tag of a million dollars. Charter school tuition, any resident student uh, that attends a charter school, regardless of where that school is located, the district has to pay the tuition. It's a little over $10,000 per student there. Contract transportation, since we have an increase in the number of our special education students um, attending school out of district, we have to increase the number of routes to get those students to school. Uh, TRS rate increases. Uh, that's going to cost us 120000 Not much we can do there. Contractual increases, that would be all of our contractual salary increases and benefit increases. That's uh, approximately 400000 And then the big thing, the last point there, is the foundation aid freeze slash pandemic adjustment, which we'll cover in the next slide or two. That's over $600,000, um, leading to a $2.5 million budget gap. Again, we use this slide every year just to kind of emphasize how big of a slice of the pie that state aid in the Garnet section, 71%, and our school taxes, the gray slice there at 25%. So 96% of our budget comes from two sources. And again, we don't know the, the total of that 71% slice. And that's the problem that we're having trying to get this budget together and uh, pr present it to the board. So I said that before this pandemic happened, things were looking pretty good. And what this is, is that it's a comparison over the current 1920 enacted budget and what the governor proposed back in January. And if you skip down to the bottom, you'll see the total line that the district was set to receive over 500,000 increase in aid. Um, the one caveat was that the governor was kind of um, changing things up by he consolidates some of that expenditure driven aid into a foundation aid number. So it took a little backtracking to come up with the foundation aid. And you'll see that was at the very top line, an increase of 388,000. That's our discretionary spending. That's not tied to any expenditure that we have. 
So that's what we can use going forward. However, what you'll see here is after the pandemic, when the governor came out with the enacted budget, you can now see all of the parentheses and that are, those are all the reductions in our state aid. You can see the foundation aid, we lost $388,000. You'll see um, the pandemic adjustment that's taken out of state aid and then it's supposed to be restored through a federal CARES restoration. Um, I'm pretty skeptical that we'll be seeing 100% of that. I've heard that we will, but I'll believe it when I see it. Um, so even with that, if you take it out of state aid and you restore it through federal, the total cut, <clears throat> excuse me, the total cut is still over $386,000 um, compared to where we were at the end of January when the governor released his executive budget. So that's the 70% of our uh, revenue. This is the 25%, our tax cap calculation. Um, it's typically known as a 2% calculation, but you'll see there's a number of different variables that go into it uh, to arrive at the levy limit. You can see the first column was our current fiscal year, um, approximately $7.1 million. And when we go through all of the um, components of this formula, you'll see that the max level we could go out with is a little over $7.2 million. Uh, you'll see the next line there, it just says that our 2021 tax levy will be 7,239,000, which is below the maximum allowable levy limit of 7,241,685. Uh, that is a year over year increase of 1.98% or a little under $141,000. Um, again, even with throughout this fiscal crisis, uh, we do not plan on um, asking our taxpayers to shoulder any more of the burden than, than we have in the past. And uh, we continue to, to hold to that. And we say that, uh, what if we did want to go out and pierce the cap? Well, every 1% that we would go over our levy limit, it would equal approximately $71,000. And to put that in context, we one FTE in a classroom is at about 75,000. So going over 1% would even cover the cost of one full-time teacher. So when you're looking at the budget and where you can actually make reductions or cuts from, you know, it's a people business. You'll see that salaries and benefits make up about 60% of our budget. Debt service, there's nothing we can do about that. Special ed tuition, nothing we can do about that. Other is everything else, contractual increases, I mean, supplies, um, professional development, everything else that you can think of falls into that other category. So when you're talking about reductions, that's where you have to pick from. So here are the reductions that we have come up with. Um, not cuts. Reductions, not cuts, correct. Um, as I said in the beginning, we're facing a two and a half million dollar gap. Uh, this will eliminate approximately uh, one million dollars from that gap. Uh, so the first one is staff reductions through attrition and not replacing open positions. These are not layoffs. These are um, employees who have left the districts that were just implementing a hiring freeze, so to speak. And you can see the breakdown there. Instructional, elementary and high school, one teacher each, uh, support staff, two TAs at the elementary school, a hall monitor at the high school, administration, half of an FTE. And then we are also asking the coaches if they would agree to a proposed stipend freeze. Um, the total of all those equals $242,000. We also have the ability to place some salaries into some state and federal grants. Um, you can just see there the, the two grants that we would be using, three grants, excuse me, Title II, UPK, and Extra. Uh, that would save the general fund another $108,000. The employee health insurance through the reduced FTEs, that is a net number. Um, it's the employees who are not coming back, less some employees who are returning to the district, and the net savings to the district is 21,000. Um, we've also created a new program for students with disabilities. 
it is a new cre newly created program for elementary, secondary levels for our students with disabilities, which will allow us to keep four students in district, as well as returning three out of district children, while ensuring their social, emotional, and academic needs are met. That's a big number, $612,000. We're asking the guidance teachers to reduce their summer hours from 17, um, excuse me, days from 17 days to six, uh, $12,000 savings. Uh, no summer school, obviously, is a savings of 15,000. And our total from these reductions is $1 million. So uh, further complicating this budget is that voting can only be done by absentee ballot. Uh, this is an unfunded mandate that was handed down at the 12th hour. It will cost the district over $20,000 to mail out over 5,000 ballots to every registered voter in the city or in the school district. Um, it just so happens to be that school districts are the only form of local government that require a public vote. You don't vote on a city budget, a county budget, fire departments, water departments, state budget, none of those. The only budget that has state voting authority is the school district budget. This year, we only have one shot at approving the budget. In a typical year, you can go out twice. You can go out the first time. If it is uh, voted down, you can make changes, go out a second time. Then if that fails a second time, you go to contingency budget. However, this year, we have one shot at it. If the budget fails, the board must enact a contingent budget. So a contingency budget has all these different kinds of statutory um, limitations and uh, what can and cannot be included. What it can include are teacher salaries and ordinary contingent expenses subject to a cap on the administrative portion of the budget with no increase in the tax levy over the prior year. I'd just like to point out the administrative portion does not mean administrators. The budget is in three parts, a programmatic, an administrative, and a capital. So the administrative um, applies to basically one third of uh, our three part budget. Ordinary contingent expenses are those necessary to provide the minimum, emphasize minimum, services legally required to operate, maintain school buildings and educational programs, preserve the property of the district and ensure the health and safety of students and staff. Uh, the Board of Education has the discretion to determine which appropriations constitute ordinary contingent expenses. Some examples of non-contingent expenses are include but are not limited to equipment, student supplies, any multi-year contractual arrangements, uh, specific salary increases for management confidential and civil service employees, um, reduced transportation requirements, as well as prohibiting the use of district facilities by outside agencies. If we had to go to a contingency budget, we would have to reduce our budget by another $143,000, which is the amount in the increase in our levy a few slides back. So that's all I have for our tier one reductions. We will be working over the weekend to finalize our budget and present it to the board on Tuesday the 19th. And at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions or elaborate it uh, further if you need me to. Okay, does anybody maybe by either typing your name in the box or show of hands. I, I have different screens, so I can't see every, you know, I have to scroll. Does anybody have board members, anything that you wanna say? Any questions? Anybody need to be unmuted? Yes, Amanda, I'll unmute Amanda. Hold please. Hi, thank you. Um, thanks Keith thank you. and Aaron, Hold on. for all your work. Oh, my volume. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Um, uh, do it? Okay. Sorry, Amanda. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so one of my questions um, 
But first, I just wanted to thank Keith for all of his work around the budget. I know um, you and the administrators, including Dr. Kaplan, have been working around the clock on, on trying to get the board this information. So I appreciate that. Um, I was wondering if the construction that was approved is going to have any impact at this time. Uh, the construction that was improved isn't going to impact so we bond that out. So it's not anything that's going to come from the general fund. We, for half a second, thought about, do we still go forward with it? But it's all life, health, and safety issues. So it's, you know, roofs, it's drainage. There's not, there were no frills in that um, project anyway. I mean, we will be very clear about sticking to the um, $10 million, you know, um, approved, like there won't be anything over there will be no, no extras thrown in there but no that's separate and apart do you want to say anything about that keith can you unmute keith my good uh, the only thing that i would add um, mrs cavanaugh is that uh, it's still subject to uh, office of state control or approval but in terms of our budget and we're presenting it. No, there is no impact to our budget. Okay. Sherry, go ahead. Uh, yes, I was just wondering, um, and thank you as uh, an all What impact I mean, will the reductions uh, have to students? Um, yeah. At this point, we have not touched any programs. There is no impact to students at all. Um, so, the, the, so we, cre we, we took our learning characteristics of our um, students with disabilities and we kind of work backwards. We take students learning characteristics, then we built classrooms that will accommodate their needs. And once the classroom, so for example, we're doing a social emotional classroom at the kindergarten level because we had a lot of um, UPK students coming up with social emotional issues. So some of them did have to get sent out of district because we just can't meet their needs, but some of them can stay with this new classroom. So it will look for them differently than the other children, but it's a classroom that they'll ha we are able to support. Like some of the medically fragile students, we can't support them. We had to send them to a, either BOCES program or a private placement. But at this moment, we have not affected any programs at all. PTEC program's not running for new freshmen next year, but that wasn't us. BOCES, um, there was not enough component school districts sending children and that, um, that they send them here. So our first and second cohorts will continue on and finish PTEC, but there is no new PTEC students coming. At this moment, we still have children going to CTE, children going to Pathways. Now, if other districts start pulling their kids out because of, you know, that's where they choose to make the cuts, it would impact our kids that we send to some BOCES program. But right here in our district at this moment, nothing has, no programs have been impacted. Okay. okay. Um, I, I had another question, but I'll come back to that. Um, let somebody else have an opportunity. Okay. Go ahead. I couldn't hear you. No, I, I was saying, um, go ahead and see if anybody else has any other questions while I um, finish contemplating the second question I have. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay. Um, if we, ha if, God forbid, the budget does not pass and we have to rely on a contingency budget, do we know what kind of cuts we're looking at then? Um, programs, sports, uh, staff, do we have any idea how severe the cuts would be if that were the case where we had to rely on a contingency budget? A contingency budget cuts all your athletics, right, Keith? Cuts everything. Okay, other than athletics, would it cut any other? I mean, athletics is also, what about um, any extracurriculars? Would they be cut as well? Hold on a second. Um, up the language, but this is why, my yes. understanding is it's bare bones educational programs only. So in other words, CYO can't come in and use no outside. Nobody outside can come and use the facility. Extracurriculars and athletics, if not limited, are cut. He's looking it up right now because mm -hmm. we've never had to luckily go to contingency. Um, go ahead. Um, 
uh, it does list here examples of ordinary contingent expenses to be interscholastic athletics and extracurricular activities. Um, but I think that when we when we um, come up with the contingent budget as a as a formality that's required, uh, the first thing is that we're going to be cut for extracurriculars because at that point there would really be nothing left on the bone. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be athletics. But in the past, it, it has been, and it has been presented as athletics and extracurriculars. And, and do we know any uh, get to a staffing? Amanda, there is no minimum number. We just, we don't need a super majority because we're not exceeding the tax, the tax cap. We just need majority. So if we have 100 voters, we need 51 yeses. Sherry, did you have another question? Can you unmute Sherry? Sorry about that. So yes, the other question that I have is, um, you know, I, I know we talked about during the contingency budget portion, it said that the Board of Ed determines this. What does that mean? I, I guess I'm not really, I know we've so never had the, one. So the, the budget is the Board of Ed budget. We are presenting this budget. So if you guys said to us, we disagree with, um, let's say you disagree with us cutting any teachers. So I can give you an example. Yours, so the budget is yours. We are presenting you the budget. It's actually the, the board's a budget. The board's budget to adopt or to say, no, we don't agree with your budget. So prior, before me, during the recession, um, there was, a, there was a, another fiscal crisis. And so the superintendent advised the board not to allocate the, the amount of fund balance they allocated and the board disagreed. And so um, the money was allocated. And, you know, we talk about the debt bubble coming up. That's part of the reason why, because there was so much fund balance allocated. The board didn't want to cut to teachers. They rather, rather allocate the money. And there's a lot that goes, once you allocate money, obviously it's a savings account. And, you know, once the money's gone, you don't get it back, but it also counts as revenue going into the next year, which lowers the, the, percentage that you can go out the level of taxes that you can raise. So really it's just for your approval. Like we would come up with working with the, you know, administrators, the teachers, looking at our programs and saying, okay, here's where we can cut. Maybe we can cut, I'm making this up, um, Mandarin Chinese because it only 20 students take it and not really impact too much. So there's one cut. And then we would present that to you guys and say, okay, here's where we cut, you know, of course we start big and, and cut the periphery stuff. And then we get down to, you know, reading teachers. They're not a mandate. Phys ed teachers are. So phys ed classes might go up to 50 students because we have to cut, you know, we have to keep phys ed, but we don't have to keep reading. So maybe reading teachers have to get cut. So we would present what you know, like we're doing now, we'd go through with a fine tooth comb, every program, every contract, every um, personnel that we have and suggest what we think would have the least impact to children. And then you guys would decide if you're good with that or not. If not, you send us back to the drawing board and we have to figure something else out. Okay. Yes. Um, Mrs. Cavanaugh, yes, the line by line budget will be provided to you before Tuesday's meeting. Is there a minimum number of votes? So I already answered that. Okay. Is there anybody else on the, the meeting that would like to ask a question or make a comment? If you just type your name in the box, we can unmute you. As the tornado rolls in and you know we're about to, because we don't have a storm enough brewing here. Is the PTA considered an outside agency? Yeah. I don't think so. Can yeah. you? Yes, they're separate from district. Right. I know that, but would they be able to use the facility? I think is what she's asking. I mean, yes, you're an outside agency monetarily. Would you be able to use the facility? I don't know. The, the specifics of using the facility is that you, outside groups can use the facility if it doesn't incur any cost to the district. And since you would be within the district, I think that the PTA would be allowed to use it. For example, <clears throat> excuse me, if a team wanted to use our football field, that requires our maintenance men to work overtime and uh, that would incur a cost and therefore they would not be able to use our football field. Uh, 
PTA use the cafeteria at the elementary school, there's no cost in, in allowing them to do so. Anybody else? Okay, well, um, I'll type my email in the box in case anybody doesn't have it. You can email me any questions. So if you think of it, when we know what the transportation savings, we don't know. Um, so we have not been given guidance. I spoke to the attorney for NISCUS yesterday. He, the dilemma is that we entered into these contracts in good faith that we were gonna be delivered a service. So we were paying, but now we're two months out, the services are be, being delivered, no fault of the transportation contracts that we signed with, but no fault of ours either. So we, we are not sure if we get transportation aid back because they're not really, so transportation aid is, is um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, by miles. It's um, derived by, by mileage. And so they're not really driving. So we're not positive, we, it's not dollar for dollar aid. We don't even know if we'd get transportation aid back. So most districts have now stopped paying their contracts. We've asked for guidance from SED, from NISCIS, governor, nobody has given us an answer yet. So we figure for right now, the money, we hold it. And if we're told we have to give it back, you know, we have to pay them, then we pay them. Anything else? Mary Beth, did you have anything? No, no, no you answered my question. All right, well, amongst everything else that's going on in the world right now, stay safe during this storm. And um, again, my email is up there or call and I'm happy to answer any questions. Board meetings, Tuesday night, six o'clock, the budget will be adopted at that time. That number becomes final and we have to just make it work. And if we get less aid than we adopt, then we have to make cuts. If we get more, then it will go into our fund balance and we welcome that problem. So have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you for participating. Thank you.